This video will cover how to create your own Niagara location model from scratch using this helix as an example. We want to make sure it's reusable and intuitive by promoting right variables. In the radius, we'll change this surface thickness. We can make it line in one click as well as invert direction. We can change rotation amount, height. We can set height of whole spiral or one coil using this boolean. Make it back surface. You can see different behaviors if you set total height or coil height. I want to show you what you can achieve using this, playing with the parameters we promoted. You may notice curl noise force. Yeah, it's working here as well. It's important to be able to rotate it as well. Next example, some rotating DNA. Growing worm. I've added some colors on top of that. This one is a bit more complicated, but we will cover that in this video. I'm using curves to create custom shape of rotation around the axis. You can see the shape matches the curve. This will be more obvious if we rotate location 90 degrees here. Let's play with the curve to see how it works and create some custom shapes. Yeah, it's easy to get hooked on that. And in the last example, I am not setting location directly, but using point attraction force instead. So we have some decent appearance in custom shape. Curves will work in this case as well, so we can create same shapes as in the previous example. It's always a pleasure to play with that. We can create a lot more. This is just simple examples, but let's dive into Unreal to start creating. We start with new level, create new folder, empty Niagara system, a meter, spawn burst, size. I want to show you existing location option first. We have some sphere, cylinder, uh, some box, plane, torus, some parameters to tweak. We have some weird torus node, which is kind of similar to what we want, but not exactly. Some ring, disk, hex, uh, it's a polygon. It's, there is a lot of parameters to tweak in cone, some angles. So this will be our reference point. You can create scripts under effects, script, Niagara model script. I call mine advanced location helicoid. Don't forget to turn layer visibility from unexposed to exposed. If you want to see this location under this drop down menu in your emitter. There is nothing here yet. So let's uh, rewrite particles position and we need to change its coordinates by, by the coordinates of the helicoid which you will find on the internet. So we just Google the helicoid, go to Wolfram math, because you can find a lot of different surfaces in Wolfram. And we can see some formula here, which we can use to set our particles position. Of course, you can read everything about it here or on Wikipedia. We can try to figure out how this all formulas work, but I want to keep this simple as possible and show you my approach using computer to check what is what. We want to use this math to rewrite our XYZ coordinates of particle position. We will need three float inputs for that. And all variables will be our inputs. We have U, V and C. We don't know yet what they are responsible for. We will try to figure it out. For now, let's just recreate this formula. This is our X, Y and let's make a Z component. Make a vector from them and plug that directly into position. It will add a vector to position node for us. Let's save and see how it works. All particles are in zero now, but don't get upset. That's not a surprise because all values are in zero as well. Now the funny part. Since we are not mathematicians, we need to figure out what our C, U and V does. And for that, I'm just changing them to see what will happen. C does nothing if others are zero. How about U? It's moving particle away on straight line. Feels like some radius to me. Let's try touch RC again with U being set. Still nothing. Okay, changing V will give us some rotation around point. With random, it will use all positions from no rotation to two turns. Now try changing our C with other parameters being set and it's lifting. I want to rename them all to not forget. This is it. We have some spiral location. Thanks for watching and I see you in the next videos. Just kidding. This only works if you want the spiral to be in world zero coordinates, not taking into account the place of our system. And we are unable to rotate it as well. It will work better if we make our emitter in local space, takes location and rotation. I will make it field helicoid surface by making radius random from zero to 200. If you need something like that, you can end here. 
In the continue of this video, I will show how to use Scratchpad to make this location model versatile and easy to use. If you want to move our system but keep already spawned particles at their place, we will need to use world colonies. Local space will not work in this case. Ok, for the ones that didn't leave at this point, we continue to improve our Scratchpad. I want to show you what will happen if we will just add some vector value to our particle position. I will match it with our system position coordinates. The position is right, so we need to attach this value with our system position. We have simulation position under engine provided variable that is responsible for that. If we add it, we will see that our particle spawning at the right place. But in location provided with Niagara, there are some switches. They add engine provided position or stack context position depending on script usage. Particle spawn or emitter spawn. We need to just copy that, but I will create it myself to show how to make it. This begin defaults node is the same as map get, but it allows us to bind default value of our input to some value that comes with Niagara. So we have our switches and positions and plug that in some input to be able to change it if we want. To be able to choose default value, just go into variable you want and under default mode tab choose custom. Plug that in and I don't want to have this convert node. So I will use our shape as vector and shape origin as a position. After add node, it will be position. Now there is a shape origin input with default stack context position. We can change it with any vector we like or keep default. If our scratch pad will be under particle update, default value will change accordingly because of our switch. If we will use our stack context position in update script, it will not work correctly. That's why we need these switches. And you can see this setup in Niagara shape location. This is working for location, but what about rotation? When it comes to rotation, we have to deal with scary quaternions. In short, that is a vector with four values, and it helps to rotate. I don't want to go through quaternions theory in this video, we can just use them without it. Let's start with engine owner rotation. Great, it's working. And crash. I decided to keep this crash in this video to show you that you always need to save your progress when working in Unreal. In default shape location, you can rotate your shape using simple vector. I want to do this in our helix as well with this beautiful switch. We will need to set our helicoid position before we add anything and rotate it as a reference using map set. After that, let's get our quaternion and this shape vector rotated using multiply vector with quaternion. Remove previously made rotation. As for switch, we will need a numerator for that. It's just a list of names we will need. To for now, use quaternion and use vector as a rotation. Then just drag and drop this enum into our scratch pad, set Niagara parameter map on switch, but I will change it in the future. One more map get for vector rotation. We will use earlier to rotation matrix, break vector, connect it and use same multiply. Then add shape position to both of these rotated shape vectors, then set particles position with that and connect with the switch. Don't forget to set the shape vector. And now there is two options to choose, use quaternion or use vector as a rotation. We will need to plug in engine owner rotation as a default. Vector option works as well. Try some cursing rotation to see how it works in motion, in different axes. Now I want to change this switch to set position instead of parameter map. Plug in our position and connect the particles. It will be the same. The next thing is that our default rotation is actually zero quaternion. We need to make it default to engine owner rotation. We did that with position using begin defaults, it will be the same. Just get engine owner rotation and plug that into quaternion input. Change default mode to custom and let's check in Unreal and it will take our system's angles by default. We already have quite a bit of parameters here, so it's easy to get lost, and your scratchpad will be useless. It's important to keep things clear and organized. Luckily, in scratchpad we have resources for that. When pressing on any input parameters, you will see selected details window. And in here we can change a lot of stuff like description, condition and things like that. You can hop your mouse under any of that and you will see some tips what it does. We will use sort priority, default value and category name. I will add category shape parameters for height input and same category for turns. We have some separate sections for them. Changing sort priority will rearrange these parameters 
the lower the number, the higher in the stack they are going to be. Now I want to get rid of this random and hide it inside the node. I will also add a new category for rotation and position, call it transform. Switch parameter is hidden in static switch input on the left, don't forget to change it as well. It's looking much better now in Unreal. I tweak them to see if everything is convenient to use. To hide random radius inside the script, I will need to add one more input for minimal radius. Make random range float from min to max radius and connect to its previous place. When adding new variable, it's born without any category on it. So you can duplicate it from other or add same setting manually. I want to add an option to make it line in one click. This can be done using boolean and select. If false, we use random radiuses, if true, just one radius. And I use static bool, I will change it for dynamic bool instead. So let's connect that, change the bool here and... Don't forget to change selected details of this boolean. Try to keep it clean. We will have some decent structure. Test it out, it's looking great. We also don't need this minimum radius parameter if we choose it to draw a line. So I will rename it to fill surface, swap the pins, and use this edit condition and visible condition to remove the minimum radius if this boolean is turned off. We will need to do similar steps for the turns. You can see it acts a bit weird without random. It's same, create boolean, I call it direct turn set and using random between our turns and zero value. Use control to move pins around. And now we have some easy to set turns amount. Cool. Next, I want to create use total height option to be able to set the height of one coil or of the whole spiral. So I'm selecting between just height or height divided by turns amount. You can see how it will look in engine if we tweak the values. Here I noticed that there is a simple way to invert the direction of the spiral by just multiplying the turns on minus 1. Here I wanted to show you what will happen if we put sign into turns amount. Let's create a boolean for inverting direction and start playing with the result. It's simple, we will need another select node and choose between turns amount and turns multiply on minus 1 amount and plug that where don't forget to plug boolean. It is working. Now I will plug sign into turns, move it to particle update. And this is how I create this worm example. You can try to turn on and off some booleans to see what, what is happening. And this is actually it. You can push it forward, but in this section I will show you how you could use that. First, you can set any forces you want and they will work same as for usual shape location, like this curl noise example. Same for colors. Let's try use curve in turns amount using normalized age. Cool, we can see some growing spiral pattern and if we turn off the surface we will see growing line. Our loop duration will be our speed of the line, so the less duration, the more speed we will have. And we will have completely different behavior if we used total height. This is what will happen if we plug in sign into height and turns as well. Next few examples is just experience with parameters, same but with surface. Check if it works on the level. Now let's animate the radius using curves. Scale that by a big number, like 250. Use normalized loop H. And make turns from curve as well. Using same normalized loop H and scale by some high value. And put some small value into height, like 15. And this is how I make this custom shape of rotation. You can also change the curve for turns to see some unexpected result. I also almost forgot that you will want to just output this shape location, not write it to particles position. 
So we can add just switch on enumerator, like we do on rotation. In that case, we will be able to use point attraction force to attract particles that were born somewhere outside to our new helix position. Or just output this position for anything else that we want. Now, I wanted to show you that you can use our new location to check what this waveform function outputs for us, like a debug. And with that on the background, it's time to finish. You can now try to create any other surface you will find on Wikipedia or Wolfram or anywhere else. I've checked, there is still a lot of them. I'll leave my source files in the Telegram link in the description. The main purpose of this video is to show that you don't need to be a brilliant mathematician to create your own stuff. You can just use existing formulas. Thanks for watching, I hope that was clear enough. If you have any further questions, feel free to ask me any way you like. You can use YouTube, Telegram or real life. Goodbye.